myself today when I preach it like I really feel it. I, I got a word today, and the, the title of this message is Why We Praise. The world needs to know why you praise God so much. They need to get a good understanding. They need to get a clear understanding. And we don't come to church just to come to church. Can I get a witness? Well, tell your neighbor, I'm not just here just to be here. Tell them God has been so good to me. And this is just a portion of why I'm going to give him glory. And why I'm going to give him praise. But put some preaching in your voice and say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he's done for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saying, I'm anybody glad to be saved. Okay, let me let me set a guideline here because I know when you was younger, your mothers and fathers told you don't talk back to them. But today I want to give you permission, talk back to me. Anybody glad to be saved? No, I'm talking, I'm talking about really glad to be saved. So today, we're going to talk about why we praise. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to go into what the Lord has said to me. And, and, and this is going to be a, not a long message. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to clear your minds and your hearts. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for just being God. Thank you for waking us up this morning in our right minds. Could have been another way. We could have slipped away last night. But you watched us and you kept us. And for this, we thank you. God, we're really behind in giving you praise. Because you kept us even before we were saved. Riding on the prayers of our parents and our mothers and our grandparents, you kept us. And for this, we want to say thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for the outcome that's going to be victory. We thank you, God, because even after this, there will still be glory. And we clap our hands and we lift up our faith to you. And we lift up our hands to you today in agreement with your spirit that we win. In Jesus' name we pray. Open up your mouth and seal this prayer with a praise. Tell the Lord thank you. All right, you may be seated. Listen to this. Um, why we praise is very dangerous. You hear me very closely. When a commitment to God has been somewhat placed in the garage, normally what, what happens is when we store away what we first loved, it loses its validity to us, but it's still valuable to God. And the concept that the enemy has used for many, many years is to, is to change our view of what God said. What he wants to do, Big Ray, is change your view about what the word says. That's really what he wants to do. He wants to, if, you can, if I can get you to change your view, then your actions will follow. And, and if the enemy can influence our thoughts, then our actions will follow. Then in our hearts, we create a carnal concept of belief that I can be a believer on my own terms. And, and I can give God what I want 
how I want, when I want, because of my own personal circumstances. And what you have really done, ooh, I feel churchy. What you have really done is allowed your circumstances to somewhat become your God, which now demands from you should be more concerned about your circumstances than the God that didn't let you die in it. I don't care what you go through in your life. Don't you ever allow your circumstances to dictate to you what you're going to do for God. I wish I had a church. And, and, and get this. Well, well, Pastor, how do you know that? Well, in Genesis chapter 3, all right, in Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, God asked three questions that he already knew the answer to. The first one he said to Adam, he said, Adam, where are you? The second one, he says, Elder Lou, he says, um, Adam, who told you you were naked? I did go to Sunday school. Uh, and then the third one, Deacon, he says to Eve, he says, Eve, uh, uh, what is this you have done? So in other words, God already knew the answers, Felicia. But Adam and Eve needed to know that there are consequences in being disobedient. In other words, there are, there are, there are consequences in being in his presence, but doing it on your own terms. In other words, I, I want to bust your Bible in here today. Please don't get mad at me. But you can't be saved on your own terms. Let me shift this side over here. You, you, you can't be saved and just live any kind of way. Uh, we, we, we understand struggles, but then we understand lifestyles. There is a there's a two different concepts. And so so when you get saved and you have a commitment to God, and when you want God to bless you, there, there's some things you just cannot do. And so there, there, there were consequences to their views being changed about God and what God said. So God said, I'll tell you what. So since you put what I said in the garage, you got to leave my garden. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And, and, and in other words, you can't enjoy what I give you and do what you want to do. Y'all ain't talking to me allowing circumstances to curve your appetite for him only increases your appetite for mediocrity. And, and, and now what you were once an enemy to has become an associate by default. In other words, if you can't give God your best, then how do you expect him to bless areas that you commit more to than him? Oh, Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. Why, why should, hear me, why should God give you more when you are content giving him less? Ooh, y'all being hard and difficult today. And you can't possibly, Pastor Luana, believe that you can push anyone in their purpose when you are content not walking in yours. Y'all no, ain't hearing me. So, so, so then, even when it comes to praise, somebody say praise. There is a reality that has everything to do with why I am the way I am. And the reality is, though at times, I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. Maybe it's just me. Or I feel like I can't do this anymore because my circumstances have my mind going blank. Anybody ever just went blank for a minute? Tell your neighbor, uh, that's me. I've, I've done it. I, I went blank for a minute. And, 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 and my children go in the opposite direction than what I taught them. And, and folks, church folks, work folks, family folks, getting on my last nerve. 
But the reality, John, doesn't change. I still owe God praise. All right. Well, what do you mean? What you mean, Danny? What you mean? Uh, uh, say it with me. I owe God. Find somebody and tell them only if they believe it. If they don't look like they don't believe it, find somebody else. Tell them, I owe God. Well, when you owe for something, you have an obligation to pay or repay in return for something you receive. And, and since, now I feel like preaching. Since God woke you up this morning and since God kept you in your right mind and since God has always been there even when your friends forsook you and, and, and life was filled with so much despair you still owe God a praise preaching praise is so strong that it confuses those that can't stand you preacher what you're talking about because in the minds of the enemy they trying to figure out Latika how does she do it how does she still come to church and praise God with all of the hell going on around her? How in the world can she lift up her hands when everything is going left? How is it that she's sitting by herself and doing this and doing that, but she's still got the strength to open up her mouth and give God praise? I want to preach to some folks today that know that it was hell that I've been through but I had enough strength in my lungs I had enough strength in my heart I had enough strength in my mind I said God I owe you so much they trying to figure out Trevor how is Treva able to come to church when she lost her daughter? They're trying to figure out, Elder Lou, how are you able to dance like this? Y'all ain't hearing me. When all hell is around you, tell somebody, let me remind you, when I think of the goodness, that's the wrong neighbor, find another one and tell them, and oh, he's done for me. My feet get to moving. My hands go up. My hair get to popping. Because God has been just that good. Or, they may say, they may say, they may say, uh, how come Rhonda can go to church and shout when just last week she was doing this and doing that. But the next time somebody say that to you, say, who made you the praise police? If you only knew what I had to go through to get here, if you only knew my story, if you only knew my struggle, but since you don't know, let me clear my throat. Says, all give thanks. I wish I had a church in here that would say, All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good and His mercy endureth forever. Open up your mouth and say, Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Tell somebody, I really, tell them, don't get this twisted. I really don't have to have no music to give God praise. Okay. Tell them, it helps, but I got a beat on the inside of me that's always going. Because you don't know like I know.
what the Lord has done for me. And so every now and again, the beat gets in. I gotta give God praise. I gotta give God glory. Three reasons why we praise. Three reasons. The first one, I want you to go to meet the book of Hosea. Hosea. I want to show you something. Been in there the whole time. But it blessed me. When I believe. It's going to bless you too. I want you to hear this. Ho Hosea, minor prophet. God told Hosea, I know y'all ain't going to like it, but I'm going to say it. He told him to do something that most of y'all, if not all of y'all, you ain't gonna do. Oh Lord. <laughs> he said, Hosea, my guy, go take a wife of whoredoms, prostitutes, and children of whoredoms. Because the land have committed great whoredom, meaning they have departed from me. There was a big debate all through commentaries on whether she was already a harlot or she became one after he married her. That's not the subject today. So whenever in your commentary time, uh, you, can, you can study that. But he basically tells her, him, Sister Hayes, I want you to marry a woman that's not faithful. Sure is quiet in here. And I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but that was back then. But what if God told you to marry somebody? I know, look straight. He ain't talking to me. What if God was talking to you? He was trying to get Hosea to see and feel what he felt. Why? Because Israel left God whoring after other gods. I went to Sunday school. All these years I've been in church, I did learn a few things in the Sunday school. So he married Gomer. Gomer gave him three children, two boys and one girl. All right? The first son was Jezreel. Name means scattered, and it was a valley. But the second child was Lorumaha, right? Or Loruhama, which was a girl. And God said, I'm not going to have any mercy on Israel. Uh, I'm going to judge them. Every child was named after what God was going to do. But there's a part in there that many people have missed, and it's in verse 7. He says, now, now, I'm going to, I'm going to not have any mercy on Israel. But remember this, as we all know, because you went to Sunday school too, Judah means what? Praise. Praise. So in verse 7, watch what happens, Parker. He says, I will have mercy upon the house of who? Judah. In other words, I'm going to judge Israel. But Judah, Shekinah, I'm going to have mercy on. And will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. I will save them. Them. In other words, what God is really saying is because it's Judah, oh Lord, 
I'm not going to kill or harm them. Well, what did you mean? The first reason why we praise, because the Judah in us, the praise in us, saves us. So that whenever God is allowing all types of stuff around us, because Judah is in us, we are automatically covered. Today, I want to share this with you. The reason why you didn't die, and the reason why you didn't get caught, and the reason why all that stuff that happened to your friends, it didn't happen to you because there was something on the inside of you called Judah. And every time you came to church, you didn't mind lifting up your hands. You didn't mind giving God glory. And I got to tell you this today. Your praise kept you. What you mean, preacher? That's why when I come to church, I might can't dance like Pastor Gretchen. I might can't dance like Minister Rhonda. But I can praise. And when I praise... The praise that I release puts a covering over my life. The praise that I release allows the deaf angel to pass over my life and my children's life and my granny's life because praise can cover me even when I don't know it. I want you to open up your mouth and say, Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you for all you've done. It was because of the praise. Let nobody tell you that praise don't matter. Tell your neighbor, praise matters. Tell them I can show them what I can tell you. Praise matters. I want you to get, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to give God the best praise you can. I want you to open up your mouth and I want you to tell God thank you. God thank you for covering me when I didn't even know all of the hell was around me. God, I just want to praise you. You've been so good I just can't tell it all. In other words, when everybody went to horn after another God, God said, I got a reservation. I got a blessing on reserve for those that got to praise. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't care what you do, but as for me and my house, I will praise the Lord. As for me, Let me tell you, the next doctor's visit, oh God, don't be scared. I want y'all to hear this. The next doctor's visit, they gonna think you crazy, but when they call your name, Brenda McCahern, hallelujah. Go in there with a praise and watch you come out with victory. What you mean, preacher? Because when praise goes first, something happens in the atmosphere.